Let the games begin. There aren't a lot of spaces for people to really do the work they're supposed to be doing. When everybody For me, it's, it's very important to, to have places like this, like Duck Creek, where I'm able to kind of come back to my own roots. So the drums are, and the flutes, often come from festival traditions, and so they're made to be played outside. Well, so it's all about communities, and so for me to be outside, for one thing, and, and being playing for people, this idea of gathering to the sound, and moving and, and communing within the sound of the drums, the sound of these flutes, is kind of bringing it back to the source of where they come from. So it's beautiful here. I'm really excited to be able to do like a kind of reimagined set for this room. Music helps us remember how to feel and it helps us remember like what's beautiful about humanity, especially at a time when there's so many distractions and like the digital age and it's hard to like connect with that deeper vulnerable world that is in all of us whether we like it or not and, and we need music in order to get there. I think it's important to uh, have places like Duck Creek and all the other institutions that help amplify our word you know because it, it wasn't until the 1970s uh, that our people were even legally allowed to speak on our history. So to be able to have a space and a place to have our voices heard and amplified in today's world is, is a big deal. Culture should be, as Gilberto Gil said, in the table, it's like the bread. It should be accessible, free events for everybody. Takrit is such a interesting story, what the space was, and, and John Little, and, but also the fact that there's like music involved and workshops. It feels like it's becoming a, a creative mecca of sorts in East Hampton. It's uh, Duck Creek, which is a wonderful uh, community organization showcasing the arts of uh, local artists, but also from uh, out of town. And it's a beautiful gathering space. I think Duck Creek is a huge gift, and artists need spaces to show their work, and people need to see art and talk about it. You're not constrained by a lot of the things that you're constrained by, maybe in a more you know commercial setting. It's like really free, and you know Jess says that she goes, "I want you to do something here that is like you know your wildest dream." So last summer with Duck Creek and with Ola of Eastern Long Island, we did a workshop uh, for families that was about creative memorials. Being in, in the center of a space that can bring in other Latinos and feel like this is accessible and is meant to be like a healing space was really special. I think Duck Creek is doing a really important great job at like taking a lot of things that you might see in these bigger cities and bringing them to bringing them outward you know a bit more these artists are all like a lot of them are across a wide cultural and you know and i would just say there's something for everybody i feel like i've witnessed all the stuff that these all the work that these people have been doing and it's amazing, and so I'm like, yeah, let's go, let's go to Duck Creek, I'm down. Every artist should do whatever they want, and I have projects that do not mix activism with music. But power, to call it somehow, is always using music and art. What if we do the same? <laughs> I think people are happier making things, whatever it is. You make bread, you make pie. It's so good to be here. I love this place. This space is like, 
It feels like it was made for bringing people together, to come listen to music, to be together as a community, to give back to the community, to support artists who are from the community. Well, it's an unpretentious place. It's a, I say tangible, it's a visceral place. It contains the bones and the character of this place past, but in this place present. And I think people feel that when they come here. It keeps us sane, and I don't think it should be something we think of as belonging to a fancy gallery space or museum space. During COVID in particular, when we had no place to gather, like this was a place that could gather. So it's an incredible resource, not just for artists, but for the community to come interact with artists like we did today. The first art show here was of Bill King's, William King's sculptures, my father-in-law. Thank you, Bill. Uh, he was 89 years old, and uh, he stood up, looked around at the large sculptures here, and uh, he said, this is my best show ever. And it probably was. There are other places that maybe have fancier settings, but I'm not sure they're as conducive to engaging the work or engaging conversations. And let's face it, if the art is not seen and it's not engaged, then it hasn't accomplished anything. And I think that's the beauty and the success of Duck Creek. It both engenders that, but it also enables it too, and it finds great programs. To have a space like Duck Creek that involves the community reminds us all that this is a project we can all do together. Yeah.